morning, everybody. How are we doing? Doing good. So um, when we practice every once in a while, we have this, like, I don't know, we just start getting like, maybe a little bit silly. And, <laughs> and then we find out that we have hidden talent, you know. So this, so Kyle's been singing, he's been leading, and uh, he started playing this song, and we said, let's do this. I think everybody will like it. So do you have There's something? <laughs> morning. pastor friend of mine says that uh, if you've got the jazz, then you've got the Holy Spirit. I think if you have the rhythm and blues, you've got as well. So, so how's the Holy Spirit work in your, what's the music he plays when, when you're right on with him, right? So it could be big band, whatever it is, because uh, think about heaven. Every type of music that's godly will be there. Amen? Amen. Welcome to Church by the Sea. Dave's on a couple weeks of vacation, um, filling in for him. Uh, his, his granddaughter is getting baptized this morning, so what a, what a great privilege it is to see your family members baptized. Uh, welcome. There, there's some bullet, bulletin announcements. I'm not going to go through a lot of those. You can read, read those. Um, there is also a volunteer um, lunch after this service, uh, if you'd like to go to that in the fellowship hall. And there's, just think about what, what's the presence of the Lord like with you today? Is, are you full, full of his, his peace, his presence? I know that for me, it's, I have to go to prayer to get there. So let's, let's pray and ask him to indwell his, his sanctuary. Lord Jesus, we come to you, and sometimes the music has, has left our hearts, and we need that music back. And really, it's that sense of peace and your presence. So we ask that you would once again and, uh, start the beat, bring the beat back to our, our lives. And Lord, for those of us who, who always feel like we're in step with you and, and feel the rhythm of your spirit and your life in us, Lord, may you uh, bring us even closer to you through your Holy Spirit. And as we, <clears throat> your people, gather here in this building, we, we are the sanctuary of, of believers. We are the sanctuary in your body, Lord Jesus. And we ask that you would invigorate uh, our minds, our hearts, engage our whole body uh, in worship to you. And we thank you that your, your blessings come from your presence. And we ask that you would, you would even more be here, Lord Jesus. Say these things in your name. Amen. Let me read the scripture 
for today. This is after the resurrection. I was trying to anticipate when Dave would get to the Holy Spirit. He's already gone the Holy Spirit, so it's a little before that. But it's the resurrection of Christ, and it's always appropriate, isn't it? Not just Easter. And this is uh, uh, Luke 24, and he's already been, this is the, this is the same passage as the resurrection of Luke. He's been with the guys from Emmaus on the road to Emmaus, and he's, he's eaten with them. They didn't get it. All of a sudden, he opened their eyes, and then they got it. Because they were thinking this, this guy, Jesus, is disqualified because he was, he was hung with criminals and died. And then, then he showed them how from the prophets, the Psalms, and all the scripture that the Messiah must suffer and die and then, then raise again in three days. He had told them many times. And so this is, this is the passage right after that where all the frightened disciples are in that room freaking out. That's, that's Aramaic for uh, losing their minds. Uh, and so this is that passage that we come into in Luke 24. While they were still telling these things and talking about it, the guys from Emmaus came and talked to him, Jesus himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they were seeing a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while they were still could not believe it because of their joy and amazement. He said to them, Have you something here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it. And ate it before them. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you're clothed with power from on high. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Please stand as we continue our worship. Good morning. I'm a little more comfortable over on this side. <laughs> Maybe we'll try that again in another three to five years. I don't know. Thank you for being here this morning. Let's clap your hands along with us. We're going to sing, sing a little bit, get your attitudes up a little bit. We're sure glad you're here. Praise the Lord with us this morning. Baby. 
Great to work with these great musicians. We have Don on guitar, Eddie on the keyboards, Frankie on drums, and Bob on the bass. They are just a pleasure and a joy to work with. We've sung this song before us too, so I know you know it, so sing along with us. Go down, down, down to the river. 
Wow, amen. Uh, could the ushers come forward for the offering? While we uh, pray while, while we're um, waiting for them to come up. Lord, uh, thank you for the river. Uh, if we, and part of our, uh, our real responsibility is to go. Often we, we wait and we need to go and we need to come to you. And uh, Father, we ask that as the offering being taken, that you would use these tithes and offerings to bless the gift and the giver. And Lord, to reach this community for Christ and to encourage and strengthen uh, this local fellowship, Lord, that uh, we would be obedient children of God, not just in the sense of obedience, but in presence, that we would be more like you because we have been with you. So Lord, we thank you that uh, we can be washed and clean. Most of us who've been baptized know that. And as uh, we, we give these offerings, Lord, may you use them in a, in a mighty way. Um, among uh, the community. Pray these things, Jesus, in your name.
Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Amen. Wow. Would you greet each other? Why don't you pronounce shalom, our peace to people around you. Say hi. Shalom. 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 last song. Thank you. If you turn your Bibles to Luke 24, where we read this morning, I'm going to be in that passage, Luke 24. Pray with me. What a, what a great worship. Lord, we come back to you and just say, wow. Wow, Lord. Thank you for your holiness, your right living, your life, your death, and your resurrection, and your living now through your, the Holy Spirit you've given us, that you indwell your people. We are undeserved, except you now no call, longer call us slaves, but brothers and sisters. What a great privilege. Help us, Lord, uh, <clears throat> look into our lives where we, we don't believe that, or where we have a lack of peace or your presence. Lord, this morning, uh, may your word uh, be open through your Spirit's teaching to us so that we would come closer to you, that we would look even closer to your presence and therefore gain uh, that peace that does surpass all understanding. Lord Jesus, we, we uh, dedicate the service again to you in our own lives. Pray these things in your name. Amen. Fifty years ago this month, Don Richardson was in the jungles of Irian Jaya, which is now Indonesia, part of Papua New Guinea. He had been working with these Aborigine tribes who had never seen a white man, and Don was certainly a white man, tall white man. And they had brought float planes in on these rivers. They'd come in and shared the gospel with, with the tribes. Uh, some were killed. Some of these missionaries were killed similar to what had been happening in, uh, in South America with uh, some guys from, from Wheaton, uh, where I went to college, and then also these guys were from Moody. And they'd gone into, after the war, they'd, they'd known that the Japanese had had camps in this area, but nobody had ventured into these, this, uh, these jungles because it was very, very treacherous. But Don had been there two and then three years and then four years working with independent tribes but remember, these are Aborigine, and they are cannibals. They're eating each other. Don goes in without guns. He's helping. He's sharing the gospel. 
A couple of people come to Christ. There's some power encounter with witch doctors. Jesus prevails. So people are coming to Christ. It's two, two warring tribes that he's been working with, independent of each other. And then one day, somebody does something to somebody, kills somebody, they're about to eat them. And, and they're, they're at the river with spears about to kill. And Don comes at the river, sees what's happening, he cries out, Lord, how do we bring peace to these people? How do we bring peace? Little did Don know that peace was coming, that God had already had a plan. In fact, God had had a plan before even Adam and Eve had fallen. He had a peace plan. He had seen that Adam and Eve would fall. He saw that these aborigines would be at the basis of man without, without the, the God of peace. And when Jesus comes and he is with his disciples who he's been training and teaching and he dies, they're freaked out, right? Remember I said it was Aramaic for, uh, for out of their minds? Freaked out of their minds? So he's in, he comes in their midst in our passage. What are they doing? They're hiding. He's already encountered the guys on the road to Emmaus and they have not got it. They're thinking... Jesus was, we thought he was a Messiah, but Messiahs don't get crucified as criminals, and they don't die. Huh? It doesn't work. Jesus has been telling them, Scripture's been telling them, we don't get it. We can't, we can't be mean or uh, abusive to the apostles that they didn't get it. You and I don't get it. You know, God's already, wor- he's working our midst today, and we still don't get it. But what, what God was doing was working to bring this peace plan. And here today, uh, there's, there's three things that God wants to show us. He's going to show us that Jesus was physically real after the resurrection. He wanted to bring them peace. And what is, what's the first words he says? You have your Bibles open? What's the first thing that Jesus says to these people, frightened behind the door? Peace be to you, which is that word shalom, which I ask you to greet each other in shalom. And, this, and shalom was a common greeting among the, uh, the Jews, but why, is he, why doesn't he say, hey, guys, it's me. What, look, look, I can walk through walls. You know, why didn't he start with something more jazzy, you know? Because what they needed to hear was peace. I've made it all right. Some of us need to hear that, don't we, today? God has made it right no matter how freaked out I am, how frightened I am, how things don't seem to be going right in my life right now. I need to know God's peace. I know that need that shalom, where though the world is falling apart and it seems like politically, economically, we, we might be okay, but it's not good. And Jesus comes in the midst. He knows exactly what his disciples need. And he says, shalom, peace be with you. And I want to walk you through what this really means. It's not like, hey, how's it going? High five, good to see you. I'd raise from the dead, I'm cool. No, it's, he, this is from the very beginning of time that God had been bringing this time together. It, remember, Scripture says when, when the time was pregnant, full of, full of ready, that the Messiah came. And Jesus uh, comes that way. And these, these apostles need that. In fact, the book of Luke, who's a, who's a, it's a great book to study, and I think one of you, are, you guys are studying in Sunday school, I think, right, Luke? He walks through, Luke from the very beginning shows how God's plan was to bring this peace upon the people of the world. Let me just give you a few ideas on this. Um, He says peace is not just peace, like, hey, things are calm, but it's actually salvation. Peace is equal to salvation in Luke and throughout the scriptures. If you actually truly have the peace of God, then you know that things are, are, are whole, are being made whole. You get that? Keep it in the back of your mind. Because Luke starts his book with Zechariah. Remember who Zechariah is? He's the father of, of, of um, John the Baptist. And he, he speaks these words. I want, I'm falling together with peace, where God is trying to bring peace to people. In Luke uh, 1, 79, he says, this Messiah will guide our feet into the way of peace. Let me just read ahead of that. Uh, Luke 1, 76. And he's talking about John, and then he talks about Jesus. This, this is very important to, to show that God, this, is, this was God's plan all along. And you, my child, talking about John, will be called a prophet of the Most High. 
for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people, look at this, the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. This was, this was God's ordination. Verse 78, because of the tender mercy of our God, amen, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine in those living in darkness, we need that today, and in the shadow of death. And look at the last verse. To guide our feet in the path of peace. So John was, was at uh, Elijah saying, hey, here's the Messiah. He's going to bring salvation. He's going to bring peace. So the Hebrew people wanted that all along. We see it today. You know, we want world peace. What's the, fir- what's, what's the thing my kids say, they, what do you want for Christmas because they can't afford anything I want? I want world peace. You know, th- you always say it, right? Well, you, that funny bumper sticker, world, I want world peace instead, but it's really about peace. People want peace, but they're not going to have peace without this, this Messiah, who is ex- actually the author and finisher of peace. Now, don't you need, you need peace in your life, don't you? You need that sustaining quiet to, to know that all things are right, though they are not seemingly right right now. The angelic host pronounced this from the very beginning, too. Luke 2, I'm just walking through Luke a little bit. Luke 2, 2, 14, suddenly a great company of, of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. So the world was not in peace. And so if God's favor rests on you, there is peace. And, and the, the angel of hosts said, this is a little baby, it's what he's bringing. This Jesus, who is Messiah, is ushering in God's reign of not only salvation, but ultimately peace. So when we're, if we're looking for peace in the world, we will not find it by just holding our peace or holding the arms or not hitting your neighbor. It comes from an inter-understanding, an inner-presence of the Lord. Let me, let me maybe put it this way. What, 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 is not, what peace is not? A lot of us think, oh, it's, you know, just don't, don't rock the boat don't you know don't make the waters stir don't tell your neighbor you know they shouldn't be doing that or your 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 family that'll bring peace no sometimes peace is not that it's it's not an end of tension sometimes peace is is the abs- is not the absence of warfare sometimes it's it's not domestic tranquility sometimes it's it's anything that it's not anything the world thinks of as peace and let me just show you what jesus says about that it's important because a lot of us are trying to get that external peace, which has to, it has to come from the internal. John 14, 27, Jesus says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So it's not something the world can give us. It's something deep, deep inside. And even Jesus knew that because he knew that people were going to abandon him. They were going to reject him. He was... God, very God, holy, did nothing wrong. Uh, and, I, and I used to say, when I was uh, in ministry, I'd say, you know, if Jesus was beat up by the religious leaders, I should expect that my elders and deacons and people would beat me up too, even if I did something right. You know, and sorry, you, this church doesn't do that. Um, I'm sure. But there's a sense that people are people, and if the presence of God is in us, then it starts to exude out of us. And if we're working our own strength and our own wills, then there is not peace in the church. And a lot of people you know, who ch- call us hypocrites because they see our actions outside the church and inside the church. We need this presence of Christ more than anything now, don't we? We need to, we need to rest in his presence. And Jesus knew this. He says, he replied, John 16, 32, a time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home. You will leave me alone, yet I am not alone for my Father is with me. Verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In Christ you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but, I, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen? When things are difficult in your life and it seems things are falling apart and you can't put them together and you can't keep your house clean and your spouse thinks you should do it this way and be this way. And by the way, in premarital counseling, I say, can, do you think you're going to change that, that person when you get married? Yes. I said, don't get married yet. Don't do it. You can't. But God's the one who changes a person. And peace has to come in that. 
And Jesus knew that. It actually made disturbed relationships. When I became a Christian uh, in my teens, my dad was a, was a Marine, a tough guy, a lot of language, a lot of, a lot of physical ability, and, um, and I was the same way up until middle school. And you, you looked at me wrong, I didn't like you, or I, I, I tried to work with the underdog to take care of them, because that was bred into me as well, but you looked at me like I didn't like you, I'd punch you in the mouth. It's not anything to be proud of. But when Christ came into my life, that, that inner peace started to come, I would talk it out, I would work it out. I'd rather take the abuse than to, to make my own will. And that, and I was, middle school, there's this girl in our, our church, when I was younger, I went to church at nine, and became a Christian, went to Wheaton College with this, this girl went to Wheaton too, and then when we were graduating, she, her parents said, can you drive her back, because it's all the way from Illinois, and I said, yeah, so we, we drove back, and said, Jeff, something is, is really different about you, I said, is that good, you know, she said, yeah, so you are a changed person compared to what I knew you when you were a kid, I said, hey, thank the Lord, because that, that's that presence of the Lord in us, and see, Jesus' presence brings that peace, the Apostle Paul says, Christ is our peace. Uh, Peter says, peace, uh, we have peace to, with God through the Messiah, and we become that peace to mankind and how we act. Paul even said that Jesus is our peace. You see, when we know Christ and we know his salvation, our character needs to change. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit. So if we have the Holy Spirit in us, then we must be people of peace. Not the kind that says, yeah, do whatever you want, I'm just not going to rock the boat, but rather an inner strength that says, I know that I know, and that whatever happens around me, I can walk through that in a calmness. My, I have a president of my company uh, says, man, I, I love talking to you, Jeff, because I'll come in your office, and all this stuff is falling apart, breaking down. We don't know where this money's coming, this money. He says, I love to come sit at your desk, and just talk to you, because there's a calming peace. All the salesmen that come into our, into our building, there's, there's tens every week, they're like, this guy's different. And because uh, he, he's never, he's, he, first of all, I don't use the language, most of them do. Um, and, and something is different. And the Christians recognize it first. And they're like, hey, you got something about you. I said, well, it's, it's Jesus. You know, this, is not, this is not anything just conjuring up. This is something the Holy Spirit has to do. And you can, my wife is here. She attest how I, I'm broken in that at times, but there's a, there's a sense that God pronounces that peace, that shalom in us, but we need to come to him. We need to believe him. How did, how did the disciples react? Look, look how they reacted. They were startled, frightened, seeing a ghost, troubled, doubts in their mind. Jesus walked among them for three years or more, showed them, taught them, was with them. How come they didn't get it? How come we don't get it? The Holy Spirit lives in us. How come we don't get it? Don't, don't be too hard on the apostles. Don't be too hard on yourself. But, but the, the point here is we need to come back into the presence of the Lord. Lord, why do you think that Jesus had to go pray? Why did Jesus have to pray? Why do you have to go to the Father? Because he gave out. He lived out. And he needed to go back and refresh and remind me, Father, what I'm here for. I know that I'm going to go to my death. You feel like, sometimes, don't you feel as parents or people in work, you're, you're going to your death daily at times. Oh, Lord, really? One more time, Lord. You better as a parent or even a, as a colleague of, of a, in a business, that's the first thing you should do. I pray on my way to work. I pray at my desk at work. Before I go into my house, I pray, especially when I had four little kids. I'd, I'd come home and sit in the parking lot. Daddy, how come it took you so long to come out of your car? I was praying, you know, <laughs> Lord, give me wisdom, give me strength. If in my own flesh, I want what I want. But the peace of Christ is different. And see, the world we understand, we can see the world react this way, trouble, frightened, seeing ghosts, things of the past, tr doubts in their mind about Christ. But, but the church, we react this way, don't we? This is how we live. When I don't have enough money, when I get sick, when I'm uh, something's broken when when I'm getting uh, when a relationship is is not going to be fixed. I act this way. I'm frightened. I'm I'm unsettled. And and what what do I need to do? I need to come back to the Lord. Lord, this didn't surprise you. I had a family member this week that had a double mastectomy, 48 years old. 
went there before she surgery, after she had surgery, and I said, the Lord's with you. I prayed with her before, and she said, yep, whether I lived or died, I knew Jesus was with me. That wouldn't have happened a couple years ago. She's still angry. Three divorces, stupid men. And why can't you, Lord? But the presence of the Lord gave her that strength to say, whether I live or die, I know Christ. And that's the kind of mindset that we need to have. We don't want to go through cancer. We don't want to go through hardship, financial hardship. I have a friend that uh, four years without hardly any income, underemployed, trying to support his family. How, how, does, how where's God in that? You better seek God. He became angry. And then sought God. Angry again, sought God. We're only human, right? But once the presence of the Lord there, you just say, Lord, I, help me to not be a fool where I'm supposed to do something right. And then, but where I'm supposed to rest in you, let me rest in you. Let me have that peace. Sometimes we act as though Jesus is still bound in the tomb, don't we? We live that way. We act like he's never resurrected in our lives. Like we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. But he is the risen, the present, reigning Lord. Amen? That's something we can't just make up. That's something that we have the presence of Christ with us through the Holy Spirit. And we are the ones. So just like Jesus has to go to the Father, we need to keep getting that presence. Keep coming back. Lord, help me. If I have a lack of peace, Lord, either I've done something wrong, which I should not have a lack of peace. I should have a peace, not peace and I need to repent. Or, Lord, if it's, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. A lady at the first service came and said, I went through seven surgeries in my life, and, and the Lord continued to be with me. Another lady came up to me at the end of the service. She said, I'm a, I'm a widow, and every night I feel the presence of the Lord hugging me and holding me at night. And I can't make those stories up. That, that's this, these are people who, who know the very presence of the Lord, and they, need to, they cry out to the Lord to bring that peace. And there's, there's, uh, there's three things that, that uh, Jesus says to his disciples here that, that's, that shows them how to continue to be close. He says, look, touch, and be. In verse, uh, um, verse 39, he says, look at my hands and my feet as I myself. Why is it important that he shows his hands and his feet? He was pierced. Right? Scripture says that he will still bear those marks when we see him in eternity. I don't know about you, but I don't want any scars in my new glorified body. Do you? I don't want any scars. But Jesus does it on purpose so that we will know that he is our Messiah. I think we'll know because he's on the throne. But it says that he will bear those marks for us. And so he shows his disciples, look, I've done this deal. I've, I've, I've won your salvation. I'm real. This is very important because Christianity lives or dies on what? The resurrection. If you can disprove the resurrection, Christianity is just a, a bunch of people trying to be good on their own. It's not. And there are a lot of people smarter than you and me who have tried it and become believers. And uh, there's, a new, there's a new movie out you need to see um, that, that uh, is great. And next week I'll tell you about that in my other sermon. But he says, look at this. They're pierced. I'm real. It is I myself. It's not a stunt double. It's not somebody else they brought in with makeup because Jesus would be completely defigured by the type of Ro Roman cruelty. And then he says something very interesting. He says what? Touch. Touch me. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as I have. When he said this, he showed him his hands and his feet. Flesh and bones. Guys, this is, this is very important. For us, we can say there were eyewitnesses of the risen Christ. He didn't faint. He didn't. He wasn't just kind of beat up and then rose again and kind of put makeup on him. He's good. No, this this is the real deal. And then he says to be, verse forty one. And while they they uh, still did not believe because of joy and amazement, he asked them, "Do you have anything here to eat?" <laughs> they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and took it. And he took it and ate it in their presence. He didn't put it in his pocket. You know, a sense of Hey, this is, this, is, this is real stuff. 
something to eat. He ate it in their presence. He fellowshiped. This is real, real. So the real physical presence after the resurrection proved that all that the scriptures had foretold. And we're going to talk about next week about the prophets and Moses and the Psalms, all those, pro- I'm not going to give you all 333 prophecies next week, but we're going to talk about this because it's important to the Christian to have a, their mind engaged as well as their heart engaged in, in this, not just this battle, it's the battle for souls, for your neighbors, your family members. You need to be equipped in order to give this good news to people, not, not to beat them over the head, but to live that, that presence and to have a, a right and ready answer when people have a question. And so that's, that's what um, we, we see is that real presence. And you remember Don Richardson at the beginning of her sermon? said, Don, in that prayer out loud, he, he said, stop! The two tribes that he'd been working with stopped, looked at him. He says, you need to live at peace. Christ would demand it. And one tribal uh, chief came over, another tribal chief came over. He says, what, what are you talking about peace? He says, you need to be at peace. He says, we, we have a ceremony among tribes, uh, this whole nation, that we take a baby from our tribe and we bring that baby over to this tribe, to this mother, and we take her baby and we bring this baby over here and give it to this tribe to raise. To raise. So as long as the two babies are alive, our people are at peace. And Don goes, this is our peace child, he says. And Don goes, what? He said, Lord, you went way before me in this. He said, Jesus is God's peace child to you. He brought who is brought, sent, and he is the one who gives you peace through his blood. Tens and tens and tens of people got it. They became Christians. Remember, these are cannibals. Became Christians, over a hundred missionary, aborigine missionaries came out of both these tribes, and they went into the deeper jungle sharing this gospel of peace. There were, there were mission outposts that were cleared that m- numbered in the, um, the dozens of all of Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, coming, coming to Christ. And it's through this peace child understanding. God had prepared them way in advance from eternity, and that's the kind of peace. For those of you who don't have Christ and you, you're still seeking, you will never have a lasting peace without Christ, because he is the child of peace. He is the he is this master and savior of peace, isn't he? And he still has that same thing to you, to look, to touch, and to be with him. That's the only way it's going to happen. Come to him. He, he is a gracious God. For those of us who are believers who still lack peace, and again, remember, we leak. It's like the Holy Spirit. We need to continue to come back to the Lord. He, he still says the same thing to us, to look, to touch, and to be with him. Isn't, isn't he a gracious God? Let's, let's uh, thank him for that. And uh, why don't you do some business with the Lord as, as we pray. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you as the peace child. You have paid the price and bought our peace with the God of the universe. Please forgive our doubts, our fears, Help us to come to you. Help us to cling, to walk, to run in your life-giving, powerful presence and peace. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your shalom and your real presence through the Holy Spirit. See us. Be with us. Strengthen us. It's in your name we pray these things. Amen. Please stand as we end our worship. It's been another great day in the Lord. It's been another great day in the house of the Lord. Thanks for being with us this morning. We hope you've been blessed. We hope as we do our final song this morning that uh, 
God will keep you through the rest of this week.
Remind you, there's the volunteer lunch after afterwards. Uh, Jesus is your peace. Go, shalom, shalom.